Thank you. David, I had, a, I had a great week and I started on my new project. Yeah. Memorizing Cher's new infomercial. <laughs> I've almost got it entirely down. I've got most of the dialogue down. It's a half an hour show, isn't it? Half an hour show. You're going to commit it all to memory? On. Yeah, I've got most of it committed to memory. You're going to, uh, all of Cher's dialogue? Cher's, her best friend Paulette, uh -huh. not Paulette, but the way Cher <laughs> pronounces it, Paulette. Paulette looks great, Paulette. Yeah. And uh, Lori Davis, of course. Right. You know, Miss, uh, uh, she's got a new, her new products. Lori has decided to bring her products to the people at yeah. half the price. Now, have you Cher and everybody in Hollywood has been paying for eight years. <laughs> now, have you, have you memorized the part where Ted Danson comes in and kneels where at the chair? He sleezes yeah. in and kneels down, yeah. <laughs> and then he says... I'm starting to realize where I am. I think I better get out of here. <laughs> so you're committing that to memory. Yeah, I've got it. I've all right, got... one night, Paul. I don't want to put any pressure on you, but okay. one night, we'd like to see five or six minutes of it. Okay, this. all right. You all do right. all the parts. I'm pretty much we'll ready. We'll put a, a little stool out here, a microphone, and a spotlight, and you do like five or It'd six like minutes of it. like a one-man show, my version of Cher's infomercial. Excellent. I'll look forward to that. Lori you know, and her product. This is what I did this weekend. I'm thinking to myself, it's, uh, we're just sick of winter. I mean, I'm tired of it being gray. I'm tired of it being chilly. I'm tired. Every time I walk around in this building and you touch something, you get shocked. I'm, I'm tired of all of this. And on top of that, to make uh, matters worse, this country now is mired, deeply mired, in a recession. Yeah. People just don't have any money. And so we're cold, we're sick of the winter, and we're sick of the recession. We're just tired of the way things are. And so I said to myself, what can I do <laughs> as a citizen and a show host to brighten the spirits of the citizens of this great land. And it came to me. I'm going to discount tonight's show. Tonight's show. <laughs> Wait a minute. Tonight's show, 25% off. That's it. Tonight's show, 25% off. Just like that. Thank you. And I, I know it's Dave, not much, but I, I hope. There you go. Excuse me, Dave. One second. One second. 25% off. You know, it's obvious that the audience appreciates your gesture, but come on. You can do better than that. What do you think, folks? He can do better. Can he? Come on. Do better than that. Come on. Let's hear a deal. Give us a deal. Okay, okay. 50% off. Can I just... I'm sorry. You're now, Dave, me 50%. Okay, let me now say like something. Let me say one thing. Let me say one thing before... <laughs> You are, without a doubt, a prince among men, but... Well, thank you very much. Don't you think these kind-hearted people deserve a little bit more? Look at those poor souls out there. They're hurting. Give them the help they so desperately need. Come on. Let's hear a deal. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's hear a deal. All right, okay. Hold it, hold it. That's it. Wait a second. Hold it, hold it. That seemed to quiet them down. Uh, absolutely free. Tonight's show, absolutely free. That's good. That little pointless exercise ate up eight minutes. <laughs> Paul, 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 may I have a little dialing music, please? I'm going to place a phone call. Wow. The idea of witnessing someone placing a phone call seems to have delighted a core of this group. I think it was the dialing music that they were throwing. Oh, me? <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. I'm going to place a call here. And Hal, Hal Gurney, uh, Emmy-winning director and uh, racing legend. Are you standing by in there, Hal? Yep. Uh, Hal, can you turn on the external camera for me, please? There we go. This is the 14th floor overlooking 49th Street here in Midtown Manhattan. Hello, publicity. Hi, Meg. Hi. Hey, it's me, Dave. Hi. H how are you? I'm fine. How you been? Okay. When was the last time we chatted with you? Uh, I don't remember. Maybe around Christmas time? Yeah, I think it was around Christmas time, so it's been a couple of months. Yeah. How you been? I've been okay. Uh, does tonight's show seem any different to you than other shows you've been on? Not that I can tell so far. Let me tell you something. Tonight's show is free. It's... That's right. It's free. Tonight's show is not costing anybody anything. Wow. Yeah. And, and the audience couldn't be happier. That's right. Or sillier. No! Meg... 
<laughs> Meg, how are how are things in the publishing business over there? Things are going really well. What what is the name of the company you work for? Simon and Schuster, and I'm in Pocket Books, which is part of Simon and Schuster. Yeah, Pocket Books. Now, is that where they put the rookies? The rookies? Yeah, the beginners. No. A place to get your feet wet. What are you implying? Well, no, it's just a, it's, it's, it's a joke. Pocket books, you know, you work in the, you said you're working in pocket books. Right. Oh, never mind. <laughs> or, or you could be like a pickpocket working in pocket books, you know? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Meg, now you're beginning to get an idea of why tonight's show is free, aren't you? I guess. Meg, how the hell have you been? We haven't seen you. Have you missed us? Uh, sure. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, anything exciting in your life? Uh, things have been very good. I'm planning a vacation to take in March. Oh, great. Where are you going? To Mexico. Oh, that'll be yeah, nice. Yeah. What part of Mexico? Along the Caribbean, you know, the Yucatan Peninsula. Oh, that's good down there. Take a, take a passport. Oh, I think I'll do that. Or now you'll find when you cross the border, it's Pasapuerto. Oh, really? Yeah, Pasapuerto. My Spanish isn't so great. All right, we'll try that one time, Meg. Pasapuerto. Very good. All right, come on into the country. Okay. Uh, now, take your, own, take your own water, of course. Yes, yes. Yeah, every individual traveling in Mexico should take at least 100 gallons of potable water. <laughs> You're gonna need you're gonna need a hundred gallons of water and fresh meat. Don't eat the meat while you're down there. No. Yeah. Do you mind traveling with meat? Well, I was thinking bringing peanut butter or something like that. <laughs> All right. Peanut butter is fine, but Meg, I'm telling you, for your own good, take some meat. Well, I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, and and will you be? Uh, I know this is none of my business. Uh, are you traveling with a friend? Are you traveling by yourself? Well, no, I'm traveling with Tony. Tony, your fiance, Tony. Tony, my my boyfriend, my honey, whatever you want to call him. Oh, your honey. I like that. It's okay. Tony, your honey. You're taking your honey to Mexico. Yeah. So, some of that Mexican honey, if you know. What I mean. <laughs> Uh, and uh, how is Tony these days? He's doing very well. Uh, Meg, I'm going to give you one final piece of advice when okay. you get down there. Uh, use a sunscreen. Yes, I All right. intend to. Uh, what, what number do you take? Like number 80. Uh. <laughs> or uh, number 15. Yeah, that'll be good. How long are you going to be down there? For about six days. Six days, that's cute. And are you staying in a big hotel? You have a no, house? Oh, a little bungalow kind of a thing. A little bungalow? And are you going to get in one of those uh, parasail things where they pull you around the beach? I haven't thought about it, but I guess it's a possibility. Yeah, okay. All right. And at night, don't don't wander too far from the hotel. Okay. All right, okay. Okay. Uh, Meg, do you know what's special about tonight, uh, other than the fact that it's free? And silly? No. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't know what's special about tonight? No. Oh, come on. It's the day after President's Day. I have no idea. Well, yeah, that's it. Really? It's, it's the day after... <laughs> Hey, by the way, did you have a happy President's Day? I had a very happy President's Day. Yeah, me too. Day. I think it was the best President's Day ever. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, Meg, how long have you and I known one another? Um, I guess about two years. Yeah, and, and when did we first get acquainted? Do you remember? Uh, I don't know the exact date. Sometime in February. Yeah, two years ago tonight! That's when! Oh, my God! Yeah, Meg, you know, with, with that with that light, you look, your hair and everything, and I've always been very fond of your hair, but you look, you look almost, uh, you look sort of beatifically radiant this evening. Oh, my evening. gosh. Yeah. Wow. Uh, no, tonight is our second anniversary together. That's great. Yeah, and uh, I have a little surprise for you. Do you want a little surprise? Sure. Okay, send in the surprise, boys. Meg and I have been phoning now for two years. Send in the surprise, boys. Meg and I have been, okay. Send okay, okay. Oh, space. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of Mexico, look at this. Meg? Oh, can you hear me, Meg? <laughs> okay, boys, thank you. It's like halftime at the Rose Bowl. All right, wrap Hi, how are you? There you go, there, that's it. There's your good All right. Okay. So, Meg, uh, oh, Lord. Okay, well, we'll just get back to Meg a little bit later. Uh, we have to do a commercial. We'll be back with Jimmy and Turner.
nice to see you. Yeah, that Meg's uh, a nice woman, isn't she? She's like uh, 27, 26. Very Good nice. Smart. Has always been very nice. But it did hurt a little bit that she'd forgotten that it's been two years. Two years ago tonight that we've been phoning Nothing over there. Worse. But I tell you, oh, it's all right. It's all right. I, it's, I think it's the kind of thing I can get over. <laughs> Uh, I'd, I'd go to Mexico with her in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm telling you, if you're traveling to Mexico, and this is not just for, uh, let me see, in fact, if she's still there. I got a little nugget. Uh. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hey, in addition to the uh, 100 gallons of potable water and all the meat you might want, mm. you should you really seriously take an automatic weapon. That's what I, that's what I would have told. Just, just to have there under your pillow at night. I'll remember that. Beautiful down there. Yeah. All yeah. right. Thank you so much. Thank you all very much. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. On the bass, Francisco Santano. On the drums, Mr. Omar Hakim. Omar! Omar! Hakim! Nice to see you. Hey! We have, we have new guys in the band we tonight. we got a whole new band tonight. Yeah, but uh, temporary substitutes. Yes, just for this evening, as a matter yeah. of fact. On just drums, there. the legendary Omar Hakim. Hakim. You know, if my name had been Omar Hakim, I would have made something of myself. <laughs> totally different. Did you sense the tension when uh, Governor Brown was standing out there? He wanted to come in. He yes. wanted to come in and shake my hand. Yes, and I'm thinking to myself, well, normally the gracious thing to do would be to go over and shake his hand. I just have a feeling if he had started shaking hands, we'd never get off the air. <laughs> that would be it. Yeah, we'd have to call the, right the paramedics decision, yeah. to come give him some kind of an injection to stop they shaking hands do, yeah. and cart him out of here. Paul, how about a little dialing music? <laughs> People who own phones are applauding now. Uh, Hal, do me a favor. Tur turn on our external camera. Okay, there. This is looking out across the uh, street to our friend Meg over there across uh, 49th Street now. There she is, hard at work. We're going to dial up there and see how she's doing. She works uh, in the uh, publicity department of Pocket Books. Hello, 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 hello. Is this ringing? Did the phone go through? Huh? Well, I, did this, did, it didn't go through? Man, well, you, you'd think I could dial a number, wouldn't you? Okay, is that it? Wow, Governor Brown was here looking for money. How about that? Okay. Could we have some dialing music, Hello, please? Oh, hi, Meg. How are you? It's me, Dave. Hi. Nice to, nice to hear your voice. <laughs> Turn around there and wave to uh, everyone. How have you... <laughs> Meg, how long have we known you? A couple of years? Yes. About a year and a half, a couple of years, whatever I think it it's been about two years. Yeah, you worked over there at uh, Simon & Schuster, is that who it is? Yeah, well, Pocket yeah. Books, it's a division of Simon & Schuster. How do you like that job? I like it a lot. Yeah. Are you moving up in the company? Well, yeah. Yeah. What, what do you do? You're an editor? You're in publicity? No, we're the publicity department. Are you a proofreader? Are you a typesetter? What exactly do you do there? Well, I do a lot of stuff, uh -huh. but we're the publicity department. Uh -huh. When you went to college, what was your degree in? Environmental journalism. Oh. <laughs> and, and are you getting a taste of environmental journalism? Well, the journalism part. Yeah. Uh, did you vote in the primary today, Meg? Not yet, but yeah. there's are, still Are you time. going to vote? Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you had to select a candidate for president this very day, who would it be? Of the people who are actually candidates? Oh, uh, no. No, you know, like a relative or something. No. No, no like, like an announced candidate, yeah. Um, I don't know, possibly Songus. Yeah. Well, he's, he's kind of dropped out of the race, hasn't he? Well, but I heard that he's still kind of... He may come of... back in the race. Right. Yeah, but do, don't you, doesn't that strike you as being sort of weenie behavior? On I... his part? Uh, well, yeah. He says, I, I am running, uh, maybe I'm not running, oh, maybe I am, maybe I'm I not. I think they're all guilty of weenie behavior. <laughs> Omar Hakim! I fought him in Atlantic City. Boom! Uh, Meg, guess who's he here tonight? Omar Hakim and uh, California Governor uh, Brown was here a few oh, minutes really? ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Oops. Yeah. yeah. 
Boy, boy, is your face red, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Meg, uh, do me a favor. Can you open that window there? I haven't opened it in a long time. See if you can't know. pry that open, but uh, put on your safety harness before you do it. Right. We don't want you toppling out of the 14th floor there. I might not be able to open it. They, um, Give it a try. Yeah, they've been sealing them shut, I think. Oh, really? They sealed them shut again? Well, uh, yeah. Give it a try. Okay. All right. Paul, how about a little window opening music? Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, apparently somebody's watering down the sealer. I guess so. They got a discount. Uh, yeah, Governor Brown was right here, uh, Megan. He came in and uh, Biff uh, gave him a hundred bucks. What do you think of that? That's great. Yeah, it was a magic moment for all of us. Good. So, how high? Way, way open? Yeah. Okay. All the way up there. Okay, now you just stay. You just stay right there, Meg. Does that breeze feel nice? Uh, yeah, actually. Okay, now does. don't don't let any debris topple out of there. No. Okay, now Hal, do me a favor. Uh, widen out there and uh, include our friend up on the 14th floor. I believe this gentleman uh, will be uh, Bill Robinson. Bill, are you up there? Is that you? Can you hear me? Am I talking to you, Bill? Yes, David. I can hear you. All right, Bill, and uh, introduce folks to your friend. Uh, this is uh, Harry the Harris Hawk. Uh huh. And and what will what will Harry do for us here this evening? Uh, Bill? Ho hopefully. Yeah. Uh, He'll fly across the street through Meg's window. Okay, all right. Now, let me, let me see if Meg is ready. Hal, let's go over and take another look at Meg. Uh, Meg, are you still over there? Yeah, I'm right here. All right, have you been joined by, uh, by uh, Rusty Johnson? Are you Rusty Johnson? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, there's always a possibility well, in New York City. It's just, a, it's, a, it's just a guy with raw chicken meat shows up. Is <laughs> standing in your office. Uh, okay, I, I think uh, we're all set to try this, right, Bill? Yeah, we're uh, ready. All right, so the the hawk is going to fly oh across Forty Ninth Street. Maybe a little drum roll and uh, a fanfare when it happens. Anytime you're ready, get ready, Meg, and be careful. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay. All right. Meg, we're going to call the fire department now. Yeah. We'll get the nets. Uh, oh. Let me, let me see here. Uh, Bill, what do, you, what do you think? What can we do now? Well, I'm going to call him back to this side. Oh, okay. All right. This will be good. A little drum yeah. roll. He's going to call him back. Yeah. Here we go. Here, Here he comes. comes. the hawk flying back across 49th Street. Wow. Yeah. Now, see this. You can't. I, you know, maybe that isn't Rusty Johnson over there. Oh, there he goes again. He's just, just diving various. It was pretty amazing, wasn't it? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, Holy here he comes. Holy. Oh, wow. What was... Oh, I don't want it to hurt itself. Yeah. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to whiplash that poor bird. All right. <sighs> send him back, and we'll throw it to a commercial. Meg, thanks a lot for helping. Nice oh, going, sure. Rusty. Okay. <laughs> hey, you know, it's not, a, it's not exactly a yo-yo, sir. <laughs> All right. Uh, turn him loose. Hang on, Meg. I'm going to put you on hold here. Okay, there he goes. All right. We're going to uh, pause for a commercial. We'll... We, we'll be back with, where is that, where is that bird? Where, where did he go? He's, he's gotten himself a cab and he's headed toward the airport. Where, where is that? Is he still in the, well, okay, we'll find him, don't worry. We'll, we'll get some we chase planes out. Uh, what was that, what did he say? We have someone on the street to pick him up. Oh, yeah, of with course me. you do, yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, we'll uh, do a commercial. We'll be right back here with uh, Mario. Oh, my Boy, we got a we got a wonderful program tonight. Marv Albert is here. Uh, Val Kilmer is here, and Lyle Lovett. Now I'm beginning to wonder. Did I snub the man who could be the next president of the United you States? See that? Yeah. See, you know, I had when we had Paul Songus on when he was still in the campaign. I had uh, second thoughts about that activity, and now I'm just wondering because of that hesitation. Instead of going over to shake his hand, and I didn't, sure. have I now made an enemy of the man snub who occupies or could occupy the most powerful president. office? 
And our producer Bob Morton has told us that the hawk, or the bird as Morty called him, has headed up 6th Avenue. <laughs> and, and are the bird people uh, going after the hawk, the hawk people? Yeah, the, uh, chasing him up there? Well, the, the bird is probably just going to the park, don't you think? That's right, yeah. And we'll be notified this, the minute that the bird is secure. Is, is, the, uh, is Mr. Robinson worried about his bird? I don't know that. <laughs> well, you should find out if he... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If your bird gets loose on 6th Avenue, ladies and gentlemen, take it from a veteran, it's not a good sign. Ah, uh, but don't worry, because with us tonight on the program, Omar Hakim, ladies and gentlemen. We fought to a draw in Atlantic City eight years ago, me and Omar. What a fight. Remember that fight? Man a alive. Uh, let's do the top ten list and then... Um... I'm going to tell you something. I, I'd vote for Jerry Brown. I'd commit to this man. I'd endorse Jerry Brown if he gathered a, a search party together and went after the bird. Now you're talking. If he volunteered, if he just stepped in and said, Dave... Let me handle this. I'll get the bird. That's right. And if he would bring the bird back in, that would be it. Mm -hmm. I'd endorse this man for the office of president. And if I had a vote, I would do the same. And Paul, why is it you can't vote? Because you did I time am... in prison? No. <laughs> no, I am a guest in your fair That's country, right. sir. Canadian, Canadian, Canadian. We like Canadians. Let's bring out our first guest. Morty, I want a, a minute to minute uh, report on the uh, uh, safety of the bird. Huh? Are you getting a report on the bird? All right. He's, he's what? He's on 6th Avenue. 6th Avenue, trying right. to lure the bird back into the cage. Oh, oh they, they, so they have him there? Yes. They oh, good. So when, when the bird is okay, we need to take a look at the bird. Br oh, bring the bird right in. Even better, we're going to bring the bird right in. All right. And is Meg all right over there with Rusty Johnson? <laughs> look, Meg, raw chicken. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> Dropped him in the fourth, he came back and we fought to a duel, right? To a tie, a draw, to 12 rounds. What a fight. Hello? Hi. 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 Meg, is that you? Yes. What are you guys looking out the window there? Well, we're, we're looking for the bird. Yeah, no, I, ju I just heard that they haven't found the bird. That they have not, no, I know. No, we heard that it was in the cage and everything was fine, but I think that was Morty lying to us. It might have been. Yeah, but so you know what this means, don't you? That there's a bird loose in the city? Not a bird, but a, a, a hawk, and it's just a matter of time before babies are being plucked from their carriages. <laughs> That's, hey, you know, don't boo me. That's what hawks do. <laughs> they swoop down on infants and pluck them right out of their carriages and, and take them to Trenton. You can just... <laughs> All right, Meg, is that Rusty there with you? Yes. All right, if I were you, I'd, uh, there's nothing more you people can do here. Just go on back to your homes now. Just break it up. Keep moving. Put the window down and go out and have dinner. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Nice. Rusty, why didn't the bird come back? He wants to know why the bird didn't come back. I don't know if Rusty has an answer for that. <laughs> well, he looks like he's right on the case. What? I say he looks like he's right on the case. Yeah, I think he is. All right, he's, I got to um, go, Meg. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hawk expert Rusty Johnson. Yeah. This is what he's doing. <laughs> a, a layman could never do that. I don't know. Some, something very odd has happened. How much time do we have in this segment? About 30, seconds. About 30 seconds. And what do we think we should be doing now? A billboard. A billboard. Now, didn't we just do that one segment ago? Say hello to Meg for the ninth time. Hello. Hi. Hi, Meg. How are you? Okay. How are you? Good. <laughs> What's going on? Um, sitting here waiting for the hawk. How's Rusty? Rusty's doing okay. Uh, does he get any more of that raw chicken? Yes, he, he has some of the raw chicken. Uh, let's just see if he can't pelt somebody with it. <laughs> get Rusty to toss some raw chicken out the window. Are you serious? Get ready, Omar. Yeah. Okay, just chuck a 
piece of the chicken out the window. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, here we go. Okay, okay Omar. Tuck a piece. Oh, we lost. Try it. We lost it, Meg. Try it again. Oh no! What if you have a limited supply? Do you have enough to try again? Try, try okay. and get a cab. Try and hit it. Hit a cab with that. Cab, All right, said. now we're gonna have to lean a little farther out with the camera. Here we go. This will get that hawk okay. back. Here he goes. Wait a minute. Ah! Hey, Rusty. You, uh, You're getting creative. Whoa. <laughs> All right. One more quickly. One more quickly, straight. All right, so we can see this one. <laughs> Digging into his reserves here. Yeah. Well, just uh, having toss a stapler out the window. <laughs> Okay, one more. Okay. Yeah. I don't, we didn't, I don't, I don't, oh, there, is it a... Perfect. Okay, thanks, Meg. Okay. Say goodbye to Rusty for me. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. It's that great peace of mind you get when you know a job has been done perfectly. <laughs> it's the satisfaction of a job well done here tonight. We'll do a commercial when we come back. Lyle Lovett will be here. You know what, Paul? We, we could have brought Lyle Lovett out here and chatted with him for a few minutes, but instead we decided to toss chicken. Talk chicken. With Meg. Yeah. What? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. On the drums tonight, you may have seen him in the Eric Clapton video with the little triangle, but he's going to play a lot more tonight. Mr. Steve Ferroni. Hi, the Steve. Nice to see you. Yeah. What, what became of... Now, last night we had uh, Omar... Omar Hakim. Omar Hakim! Yeah. One, one of the scrappiest middleweights. Uh, you know, I fought him in Atlantic I City. I heard you did, yeah. You had a bout. But now, what, whatever became of our own uh, gifted drummer, Anton F Fig? An Anton, Anton Fig is in, uh, is in Japan, touring Japan this yeah. week with Booker T and the MGs. Good gig! Yeah, not a bad gig. Well, and not as be, good as this gig. He'll be back when? He'll be back uh, whenever we're back. Yeah. Well, after this week, we're off for a week. Then when we come back, we'll have the full complement. Omar yes. Hakim, I want him back. What? You want me to just fire him? I just enjoy periodically screaming, Omar Hakim. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at the happiest man on the face of this planet because immediately following tonight's telecast, I'm getting married. <laughs> It's, I know it sounds crazy. I've only known you, what, like eight minutes? Oh, when it's love, it's exactly. love. Exactly. You can't start it like a car. You can't stop, stop it, it with a gun. Eileen and I, is it Eileen? Yeah, we're going to be married. I just want to, have to double check for the paperwork. I'd like the uh, ceremony to be performed by the NBC nurse. Get her down here. I, I may swoon. You never know. Uh, last night, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you watched the big program, but we, uh, you know what we did, Paul? We called our friend. There's a, a lovely young woman who works in a building uh, across the street, just uh, one block south of us. We're between 49 and 50, and she's between 48 and, and 49. And we look out into her office on the 14th floor, and, and we called her last night, and we were going to do something really exciting. We had a man here with a, a beautiful hawk, beautiful uh, yellow-beaked, uh, orange-spotted hawk. And the hawk was going to fly over to her office. Hal, do you have that uh, videotape? Sure. This is our uh, Emmy Award-winning director and uh, racing legend, Hal Gurney. Hal, roll the videotape of roll what tape. transpired here. Hal, will you be at the wedding later? Yeah, you bet. There goes the hawk, right across 49th Street. See? Right into that office. Very, very exciting. That's great. And, and then what happened, Hal? The hawk came back, right? Show the videotape. Roll please. Yeah, here, now here, watch. Here comes the hawk. This is a very rare animal. They brought it down from upstate New York coming back in. Whoops, wait a minute. Wait. The hawk was gone. The, just, just took off, not accustomed to being in the city. And, and at one point, Morty said, well, the hawk went up 6th Avenue. And we thought, well, of course, the hawk's going to, uh, to Central Park. And, uh, but nobody seemed to be too concerned about it except me. 
But I, you remember, Paul, I warned people what might happen if there sure. was a hawk. Pal, roll that warning uh, last night. When, roll, when, with the, the minute the hawk was lost, I had... There's a bird. Not a bird, but a, a, a hawk, and it's just a matter of time before babies are being plucked from their carriages. That's, hey, you know, don't boo me. That's what hawks do. They swoop down on infants and pluck them right out of their carriages and take them to Trenton. You can just... All right, so that was my warning. That was my instinctive reaction to the situation. I said, you know, you shouldn't be laughing at this because it's not all that funny. A hawk doesn't know. A hawk is in the wild just looking for prey and could swoop down on anything, jerk it out of a carriage, and take it who knows where. Absolutely. Everybody laughed. Oh, Dave, you're, you're, you're an old lady, they said. Dave, you're, <laughs> you're, you're a reactionary ninny, they called me, and they just laughed and scoffed and went on drinking their smart little drinks and talking their smart little... Uh... Anyway... So, when, when NBC News, thank God, somebody cooler heads prevailed, when NBC News found out that there was a hawk, a, a wild, vicious, savage, biting hawk, <laughs> loose here in Manhattan, they dispatched a camera crew up to Central Park, and wait till you see this rare footage that NBC News got last night. Hal, roll that rare NBC News footage, oh, and we'll just, amazing. we'll see, see, look, there's the hawk, there's the baby, it's being carried off by the... <laughs> That's right, Will. They're not laughing now, are they? They found the baby. The baby is fine. They found the baby early this morning in Prescott, Arizona. Oh. At, a, at a trailer park there in Prescott. Everything's fine. fine. The family has been notified, and they're, they're flying out to pick up baby. So that, was, that was our little uh, escapade last night. Boy, oh boy. Thank you. Dave, on behalf of Sid, Will, and Anton, we welcome you to your own show. Thank you very much. We're happy to be here. Nice to see you on guys. On your show with you. I have a, a little announcement here to make over the weekend. Who is the woman in Concrete Blonde, the singer? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh. Jeanette? Yeah. Jeanette is it? Yeah, name. that's right. Over the weekend, she and I were married in a quiet ceremony. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> How uh, soon one forgets one's own uh, wife's name. Yeah. Now, Paul, do you... <laughs> do you I, I don't even know if I should bring this up or not. Uh, Lawrence Welk passed away. Yeah. 89 years old. Host, host and star of the longest-running television show in the history of television. We have it in our wherewithal here tonight to present kind of a short, I think, compelling, moving tribute to the passing of this great man. Now, should we do it or not? Well, I've, I guess I think we should do it. All right, it. okay, but don't, now don't, don't screw it up. All right, I'll turn on the machine. Get ready, Paul. And maybe some special lighting for this. That's perfect. All right. All right, thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Oh, Hal, do me a favor. Turn on, turn on the uh, external camera, if you will. Hal Gurney, Emmy Award-winning director and racing legend Hal Gurney. <laughs> this is out of uh, the 14th floor, one of our offices here at the uh, General Electric building. We're looking across 49th Street into the, I guess that's the Simon & Schuster building, is that correct? And that's our friend Meg Parsant of the lovely, lovely auburn hair. Now, Paul, from you, if you don't mind. If you're not tired from that Lawrence Welk tribute, I need some dialing music. Perfect. Paul, you, you read my mind very nicely. Nicely done. Excellent job there, Paul, of reading my mind. Here we go. We're going to be calling our old friend Meg. We've known her for quite some time. And I believe, I believe we're very close to Meg's birthday. Okay. Now watch. Watch. Let's see her pick up the phone, Hal. Let's t see that. There we go. Thank you. Got a phone right there on her shoulder under her hair. Hello, publicity. Hi, Meg. It's me, Dave Letterman. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Turn around and wave hello to America. <laughs> Meg, how have you been? I'm fine. What have you been doing? What's new? Uh, well, there's a big book convention coming up this coming weekend, so we've been a little frenzied getting everything together. Yeah, where that. is the big book convention? Out in Anaheim. Oh, are you going to get to go to that? Well, I'm not, no. Oh. But... 
other people, some other people. Now, how come you don't get to go to the big book convention? Well, I get to do a lot of the preparation beforehand. Is it because you went to the big book convention last year and misbehaved? No. <laughs> That's not why. Would you, would you like to go to the big book convention? In Anaheim? I'd yeah. be interested, too. Yeah, yeah I'd, yeah, I'd like to see that happen for you. Oh, well, thanks. I'll, I'll make a call or two and see what I can put That's together okay. for you. That's okay. I have other plans. No. Oh. <laughs> Hey, hey, Meg, did you hear the news over the weekend in a quiet ceremony? I was married. You were? Yeah, to that, uh, that singer in Concrete Blonde. What's her name, Paul? Janelle. Janelle. Janelle from Concrete Blonde. Jeanette. Great. <laughs> Meg, uh, have you been all right? I've been okay, yeah. Have you been having some fun? Yes. How about this weather? It's great, isn't it? Yeah, if it lasts. Yeah. You know, you know, Meg, each time I see you, each time we see you, I believe... You look better and better. Well, that's very nice. You Thank look very, you. you look very happy. You look very, very healthy, and and you couldn't be lovelier. Thank you. Uh, and uh, any news to report from uh, Tony, your boyfriend? Um, no. How are things really. going there? Everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, as I recall, is an artist. Architect and an artist. Ar architect and an artist, yes. and and sometime you kids go to the park, and he will sketch you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now, Meg, is it true that you are very close to a birthday? Yeah. Yeah, when is your birthday? It's uh, May 27th. May 27th, and what is today's date, please? Oh, The right. 19th. Right. So we're, well, I can't do the math on this, but we're... Almost a week away. Almost a week away. How old a woman may you be, Meg? Uh, it's going to be my 30th. Congratulations. Very nice. 30 years old. Meg, you know, uh, we're going to be off on vacation, I believe, when your actual birthday takes place. So uh, we have planned a little tribute and a little special presentation for you and your birthday. Can you, can you open your window there, Meg? Yeah, sure. Okay, but be very, very careful. Strap yourself into that tethering unit. Yes, I happen to have it right next to me. Meg, do you, how do, you, do you like me all right? Do I like you all right? Yeah. Sure I do. I mean, are you fond of me as a person? As far as I know you. Do you, do you find yourself thinking of me at all? <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you wake up on Tuesday and say to yourself, it's Tuesday, I hope Dave doesn't call? No. Or do you say, it's Tuesday, I hope Dave does call? I don't know if I say either, but it's nice when you do. Would it, would it have killed you to lie a little bit? I should. It's very nice when you do yeah. call. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm very, very fond of you. I always try to point that out. Well, that's true, and I appreciate that. And, and, and? What do and, you get? Who is that? Is there, do you have a I butcher in the hallway? What, is there a guy delivering meat behind you, Meg? What is that guy doing in the apron? What, what the hell is that? All right. Open, open up the window if you can. All right. Now look down there onto uh, 49th Street, Meg. Uh, how, go ahead and cue him. Uh, we have down there, Meg, the Jamestown High School Red Raiders Marching Band. You do? What? Under the direction of Lee Deppis. We have 76 students. There they go. Be careful, Meg. Can you hear them? Okay. We have closed off 49th Street, much to the delight of rush hour motorists. And uh, they should be directly under you. I believe they're playing Happy Birthday. Yeah, there it is. This unit has won the President's Trophy again this year. And let's see what they're up to. Those are the kids from Jamestown High School. And uh, we have a camera above Meg. She's looking down onto the street. And let's see, what have they spelled out? <laughs> oh, here it goes now. Thank you. That's well, talk to you later. Cute, wasn't it? It's the uh, the kids from the Jamestown High School Red Raiders marching band. Uh, Lou Deppis is their director. Seventy six students, and that's cute. They spelled out knees. No, it says Meg. It says Meg. I lost a couple of them because of the uh, street markings. You know, for the fun of it, let's just see how long we can keep 49th Street closed. <laughs> Before somebody... Oh, yeah.
Um, it doesn't, get out of there, it doesn't concern you. Get away from there, we don't want to look at you. Okay. Yeah, let, let's see who has the real power in this town today, huh? Hey, it must, must be some kind of accident or something. We ain't moved in 45 minutes. That is impressive. Oh, uh, let's see, what are we doing? Oh, yeah, Meg is great, isn't she? Uh, very, very and fond she of that. She choked Meg. up. Hey, really? You think so? Yeah, you can oh, see. Very cute. Well, maybe I can work that to my advantage somehow. <laughs> uh, let's do a commercial. We'll be back here with our friend Glenn Close. program. If you're uh, just joining us, we had uh, New York City Midtown uh, rush hour traffic backed up from 6th Avenue or Avenue of the Americas. <laughs> All the way to the East River. Is that right, Bob? For how long? For about a half an hour? Uh, just about 15 minutes. Alright, here, here's my impression of a guy in a car over around 1st Avenue in the backup. Has no idea what's going on. Talking to somebody else about whatever the problem is. Uh, I believe uh, some kind of uh, nuclear waste truck turned over <laughs> Turned over an exploder or something like that. <laughs> now, now it's, it's moving uh, smoothly and freely. Yeah, all right. I feel marvelous. Thank you very much. I would say that uh, his, his butt was so tight, I did a thousand backflips, would have to be Marsha. Is, isn't this, excuse me, isn't this studs? No. I'm, I thought I was... <laughs> told me they were booking me on studs. No, I, no, no, Paul. I apologize. No. It's, it's Club Barcelona. Oh, it's a... yeah. I need to know from our uh, talented, and personable pro talented and personable producer, Bob, Morty Bob, Morty, Morton, is it raining outside? Is it inclement? Yes. Hal, oh, it's not Hal. Pete, do me a favor. Pete Fadovich sitting in for Hal Gurney. Pete, turn on the external camera, if you don't mind, for us, please. There it comes. There we go. Let's see, is it raining or not raining? I can't seem to tell. Is it raining? It is raining? Okay. Is it raining too, too hard to do what we were going to do? We can do what we were going to do? Uh, I don't know. Should we do what we were going to do or not? Okay. What we were going to do is turn on the poison gas valves in the audience. <laughs> See, you have to be very, very careful, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, okay, let's, let's, I tell you what, let's do this. Let's call our old friend Meg across the uh, street there. Meg. Paul, as always, from you, I'm going to need a little dialing music. Now, this is a local call, so don't go nuts. We're calling Meg uh, Parasant. She works at Simon & Schuster over there in uh, Pocket Books or something. Uh, or is it Notions? I'm not sure. Boy, my first phone call back and I've screwed it up. Let's try it once more. What do I need to do to get out? I'm out? Dial straight out? What did I do wrong there? Okay, 698. Here we go. This should be the lovely Meg Parsant. Uh, Pete, turn on that external camera again. We'll get a look at Meg over there. It's uh, raining here in uh, midtown Manhattan. As a matter of fact, they've had severe, dangerous weather warnings and storm reports out all afternoon. Meg, have you answered the phone yet? Hello, Meg. Is it ringing? It's... Oh, I have to dial again, for heaven's sakes. What did I do wrong that time? You know, at home, it's the funniest thing at home, I usually, on the first try, get a number... <laughs> just 
should go right out. I don't, I don't know what that is. I, I, I've dialed around the world at home. All right, let's, let's try it again. H hell, I've ordered pizzas at the house. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get across the street here. Okay, now this should be it. Should be it. It's taken me three times to place this call. How much time do we have left, Morty Bob Morton Morty Bob? Uh, four minutes, okay. And now, again, listen. All right, now, now I'm serious. Am I doing something wrong? Or should I just take this thing out? I'll take it out. I'll yank the thing out. Don't. I will. I'll, I'll send for the shears and have this thing pulled out. Here, Bob, you come over and dial this. Bob Rooney now assisting in the dial. Okay. Oh, Bob's made his first mistake. So his scores are going to be a little lower than they would have been for artistic design. Is it going through? It's not going through. Bring me the shears! Someone please bring me the shears! Huh? Hello? Hello? I've never felt so stupid. <laughs> Hello, Meg. Hi. Hi, it's me, Dave. How Hi, are you? Now, Meg, what have you been doing? I, uh... Oh, look at how nice you look. You look great. Thank you. You have beautiful hair, Meg. Have you recently had it cut or something? Yeah, I did. Oh, it looks great. Thank you. What's been going on in your life? What's new? What's happening? I had some vacation last week. Where, how much time? A whole week? Well, I just took a few days. Where did you go? I went out to our family's house in Southampton. Oh, you've done that before, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, it's nice. It's and, really and, fun. And how many folks are there all together at one time? Um, it was about... I don't know, five and my Family? Niece. Family and friends? Just family. Family. Well, that's great. Yeah. And, and I bet you're the cutest one there, aren't you? No, my niece is very cute. Well, that's very generous of you to say, but I would guess if put to an independent research board, you would be judged. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then, Meg, what else have you been doing? What's new? How about those Olympics? Did you enjoy the Olympics? No, yeah, I actually got a little tired of them after a while, I think. <laughs> Uh, did you did you get a chance to see Jim Lampley on Club Barcelona? No. Yeah, that was that was the little late night uh, telecast, and for some reason they named their show Club Barcelona. No, I, be I, I believe it. it's Spanish, although I'm not certain. Mm -hmm. uh, how are things going on your job, Meg? Very well, actually. Yeah? And your boyfriend uh, Timmy? How's he? Tony's fine. Tony, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought it was Timmy. Yeah. Uh, and Meg, have you missed me at all? Yeah, you know, you don't. You should come over and we'll visit someday, or we'll have a little lunch, or we'll get together, and it'll be a lot of fun. Okay. All right. Uh, now, Meg, we're going to try and do something for you here tonight, although I'm not sure if the weather has uh, kind of uh, screwed it up for us. We need you to sort of stand close to the window and open it up. Do you no, mind doing that? Not at all. But put on your safety harness first, Meg. I know. You know, we're supposed to get a huge storm. I don't want to get sucked out. Right? Well, I, I know. <laughs> okay, this is a little risky. All right. Be, be very, very careful. Do you have those rubber boots that I sent over? Well, I didn't. I don't have them, no. Well, they're they're forecasting killer uh, lightning here this afternoon. Great. Well, I'm just very happy to be right near the window here. All right, all right. <laughs> and and I think we're going to need you to stand as as nearly motionless as you possibly can, like like many of our crew members now. Uh, so you need me to open the window? Yeah. Do you mind? No. Or we got a man here who's pretty good with a phone. We can send him over to <laughs> help you. Okay, now just sort of, just lean out and, and, st and strike a, a relaxed pose. I'm not too relaxed. Okay, well, just, just kind of get yourself out there a little bit. All right, now we have a man downstairs. What we're going to do is we're trying to do a portrait of you on the sidewalk, Meg. What? Yeah, we have a guy down there named Miles Ludvigsen. He is an animator, illustrator, and street artist from uh -huh. the Rhode Island School of Design. Oh. And uh, as soon as we get the camera loose, we'll... And we should see... Is that him? I don't see anyone. <laughs> I don't see anyone either. I, oh, there he is right there. The guy in the, in the foul weather gear. <laughs> yeah, he's... He's... You see him? Down there. 
Now, Meg, we, we believe that he can sort of do your portrait right there on the sidewalk. Yeah. Uh, although I, d I don't know what role uh, the, the weather will play in all of this. We're going to give it a shot. Do you mind hanging around? No. Okay. okay, so then hopefully at the end of the show, we have a lovely likeness of you right below on the sidewalk. So I have to just sort of hang out at the window? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. L like you haven't done that plenty in your life. Yeah. A little, a little singer, and that's, and that's how we play Club Barcelona. All right, Meg, I'm going to put you on hold. We'll uh, chat with you minutes from now. Okay. All right, you know, Meg, Meg, what? you know I love you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. 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 Did you just dial it? Yeah. We, uh, we're going to pause for a commercial. We have a lovely show. Lily Tomlin, Jake Johansson, and Helen Shaver. Please, folks, come on back. Jake Johansson is here tonight. Helen Shaver is here. And uh, if you're just joining us, uh, Pete, turn on that camera. Let's see how this young man is doing with uh, Meg's portrait out there on the sidewalk on 49th Street here in Midtown Manhattan. This man's name is Miles Ludvigson, and he's painting a portrait right there on the sidewalk. And is it now raining or has it stopped raining? It's it, it, it continuing to rain. All right, so at the end of the show, he'll have a lovely likeness of our friend Meg. And is Meg still in the window, Pete? Quick, get us up there real quick. And... Yeah, oh, yeah. Let's see if she's still there posing. Well, it looks like the lights are all out. She's... It's the 14th. There you go. <laughs> there she is. Yo. Hey, you're doing a great job. Don't move. He said... The guy, Meg, the guy, the guy said you're going to have to hold your breath, all right? Oh, fine. You're, mo you're moving a little too much for him. <laughs> All right, all right, we'll check back with you later. Okay. All right, bye-bye. I kind of like how that looks, Meg, Meg hanging out of the window there. Um, let's see, let's do our top ten list and then get on with the big program tonight, shall we? Yeah. I, I wish, you know, they have, like, for people who are having trouble reading, they have that hooked-on phonics. I need to get myself into a program for people who are having trouble dialing the phone. <laughs> Oh, took, that become? I don't know. I, it took me three times to get a call out of here, and it didn't work any of those times. And then Bob uh, Rooney, Big first Bob, time. just comes right over. First time, boom, places yeah. the call. Like it's magic, some kind of wizardry, some kind of <laughs> electronic voodoo or some nonsense. Uh, top ten perks of dating the president. Now, there are reports surfacing. <laughs> You too? Tomorrow on the show, I say you too? Oh, you too, exactly. Yeah, yeah me you. too. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow on the program, Robert Klein will be here, George Thorogood, and Isabella Ro R Rossellini will be joining us. Uh, Meg, is that you? Are you still there? I am. Yeah, let's see how this portrait is uh, going. Uh, Pete looks... Wow! Very, very nice. Can you see it at all, Meg? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's the finished product. But I'm sure you'll be thrilled with it when it is. Well, it looks pretty good. Oh, yeah, I guess from 14 floors. <laughs> well, i tell you what we'll do. We'll chisel that out of the sidewalk and have a truck to your house. Okay. Hey, Meg, you know I love you. Okay. All right, hang on. Talk to you later. Yeah. Hey, Isabella Rossellini will be here tomorrow. She and I were married briefly in the 50s. You knew that. <laughs> Are you there? Yeah, yeah. All right, Meg, we have just about a minute left. We're going to kind of unveil the uh, portrait. Boy, you look great now. What the hell did you do? Did you take something off? You look great. No. Uh, all right, now, well, Paul, a little uh, drum roll, Anton, and then a big fanfare, and then just blow us right out of here. All right, here we go, Meg. We're going to take a look at it. It should be, we think it should be nearly finished. What do you think? Have you seen it? Yeah. Uh, I don't, 
where is it? Oh, there, let's see. Shaver, we ran out of time. We'll have Helen back as soon as we possibly can. My thanks to Jake and, of course, Lily Tomlin. Have a lovely evening. Good night, everyone. <laughs>
Maybe. And uh, uh, is that part of Simon and Schuster? No, it's not. Well, you should try and get some of those books like that. We do some pretty good books. Yeah. We do some pretty good books. Yeah. What was uh, what What was the last book you read that you enjoyed? I actually enjoyed the book I'm working on. Uh huh. What's that? It's um the biography of Mike Ditka. Oh, oh, Mike Ditka, Chicago Bears yeah. coach. Yeah. So uh, I actually did enjoy it, which makes it better to work on. Yeah. And and what is it you found fascinating about the man? I didn't know all that much about him, and he just. Uh, Seems to be all sorts of contradictions. Meg, be very calm. We're having an earthquake. <laughs> get, get under your desk, Meg. It looks like it's a big one. <laughs> uh, yeah, that Mike Ditka is a fascinating guy. He got uh, the Bears got beat last night by the Giants. You know. They sure did. Yeah. I What do you think that Ditka uses in his hair? I don't know, but I think it's a different color now. Yeah, well, see, that should be a, a chapter in the book right there. Well, maybe we'll do a, a sequel. Mm -hmm. Are you doing any work on that uh, Naughty Nurses sequel that you were telling me about? <laughs> Meg, you know why I called today? Why? Uh, we'd like to play What Are We Cooking? Uh-huh. Now, here, let me explain to you. Our, our friend and stage manager, Biff Henderson, is 14 floors down on uh, 49th Street on the sidewalk there. Mm -hmm. He's cooking something on a grill. Oh, my gosh. Now, uh, when I tell you, you go ahead and open the window and see if you can smell what it is that Biff Henderson is cooking, okay? Okay. All right, are you ready to open the window? I'm preparing to open the window. All right, Meg, I'm going to show our studio audience and the viewers at home what it is we're cooking, and then you open the window. Here it is, Hal. Show them what we're cooking tonight. Okay, please. Please, ladies and gentlemen, I must ask for complete... Silence here. All right, Meg, have you opened the window? No, I haven't. I will All right. ask. Open it right up. Uh, and okay, okay. if you can, tell us what it is we're cooking down there. So I'm just supposed, supposed to sniff and see what I, can, what I can guess it is? Yeah, that's pretty much how it works. Be very, very careful. Don't topple out. All right, now, Hal, show him where Biff is. Woo. You. I don't see him. All right, well, it's not important that you see him. Oh, I do. Well, I see something over there. Yeah, you, there he is right there. <laughs> All right, all right, Meg. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to call for an answer now. What are we cooking? Knockwurst. Oh, I'm sorry, Meg. The answer we were looking for yeah. was bacon. Oh, I was in the right family, sort of. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, we'll play again. So hang on. Okay. All right. Thanks, Meg. Nice chatting with you. Okay. There you go. That's how. <laughs> What do you do when it's summer afternoon and you get really thirsty? Well, just watch this, a message from Victoria Bitter. for joining us this afternoon and uh, in your homes tonight all across this great land of ours. Oh, you came on a good night. We're playing What Are We Cooking? Is Meg still there? Paul, some What Are We Cooking music. Hello, Meg. Hi. All right, let's try it again. Okay. Okay, stick your head out there. We, ha we have something completely different down on the grill. Let me show the audience what it is. Here's what we're cooking now. It's, there it is, right there. How can you share? There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right, and uh, Meg, do you have a sense of what's going on? I think it's um, barbecued chicken. Barbecued chicken. Oh, very, very close, oh. Meg. Certainly in the picnic family. Oh, really? We were looking for steak. Oh, geez. All right, we'll play one more time before the night's over. Okay. All right, the Buick could be yours. Hang on. All right. <laughs> You're not going to find a nicer woman in New York City. Oh, a good sport, too. Uh, uh, a, a, a smart, a good sport, and a handsome woman. And as I was saying before, she picked up the phone. Look at that hair. Look at how beautiful that woman's hair is. Now, that, that's the color of Mike Ditka's hair. That's what he's done to it. Mike Ditka has hair that color, and he puts it in a tube or something. But she, that's her natural, she's a lovely, lovely woman. Uh, here's our top ten list for this evening. And then let's uh, get on with the program, ladies and gentlemen. Hi there! Hi. 
Meg, how you doing? I'm all right. Yeah, you know, uh, we have uh, Miss America on the program tonight. Oh, that's fine. Did you see fine. the big pageant Saturday night? I didn't see it, no. You know, it was uh, not so much a pageant as it was a gala, I thought. Oh, my. Yeah. And uh, it's Miss Florida, as she is the new Miss America 1993 and a lovely representative of our country. That's great. Yeah. And uh, Gary Shandling is on the show tonight. Uh, do you ever watch this show, by the way? Um, I might have. It was on a while ago. His old show? No, no, th no, no, uh, my show, me, Dave. Your show? Have I ever watched your show? Yeah. I have watched it, yes. <laughs> well, another satisfied viewer. Y you won't get a more ringing endorsement than that. <laughs> huh? I have watched okay, it and I've enjoyed right. it. Oh, thank you, Meg, thank you, Immensely. thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Meg, uh, we have to play one more time here. What are we cooking? And so uh -huh. quickly, I'm going to show the audience what it is. We're cooking down on the uh, street there. And with your nose, with your all factory facility, see if you can't tell us what it is we're cooking tonight. The audience now knows. Okay, it's well. Call some suspenseful music. I think it might be hamburgers. Uh, Meg, 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 Meg. I'm terribly sorry. Were you trying, Meg? Were you really trying? I was trying? trying, but there are a lot of other scents that are mixed in with the uh, cooking scents. Well, can you name one of those? Gasoline. <laughs> all right, quick. Inhale one more time. Try it really quickly. Once more. Um, kielbasa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Meg, I'm sorry. It was chicken. It was oh, chicken. Oh, see, but I, I said chicken last time. We're, we're, sending, we're sending Biff up there to your office with all the stuff. All right? Are you? All right, talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Right, That's it. Okay. Uh, tomorrow on the program, Martin Short will be here, and uh, also a very uh, funny comedian, uh, Blake Clark. Another great show tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen. We'll pause here and be right back with Miss America 1996. <laughs> You know what we're going to do? We've been, uh, we've been cooking food on the street, and we're going to send it over to our friend Meg. Let me see if she's still here. Hello, Meg. Hi. Hi. Uh, is Biff there with the food yet? I thought I heard him outside. All right. No we holler here. at him to bring it on in. Biff, can you hear me bring in the food? So we should have everything that we cooked out there. <laughs> oh, my. This looks appetizing. Yeah. <laughs> there, you, there you go, kids. Enjoy. Great. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Meg. Nice chatting with you. Okay. Bye. Uh, have a lovely meal there. Oh, okay. Well, that's, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> That was it. Good to, good to see you, and again, good luck and congratulations. You're a, a lovely, wonderful Thank representative you. for the country. Thank you very much. Uh, Kmar, ladies and gentlemen, if you've stayed with us this long, Kmar has not stayed with us this long. <laughs> He'll be here tomorrow night with Martin Short and Blake Clark. Good night, everybody. Costas hears more from Camille Paglia. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. David, sitting in with us this evening on horns, really two cats who are really the foremost, funkiest horn section, two brothers who come out of New York City. I want to introduce them the way Sinatra introduced them when he used them in Mac the Knife that he recorded just recently on the L.A. Is My Lady album. And he said, we've got the Bracca Brothers. There's no way this band can lose. And they sound like this.
here. Good night, everybody. We're running a little late. Drive safely. No, we're still on. We're still on. We're still on with the Brecker Brothers. Nice to have you boys here. Did you get any uh, snow up in your neck of the woods, Paul? Oh, boy, do we ever. And when I say your neck of the woods, I mean where you live. Yeah, which is uh, Greenland, as yeah. you know. I bet you had a lot of snow up A lot of snow, about a, about a foot of snow. And uh, Saturday, late in the day, I decided to, what I would do is uh, go out and shovel the snow off one of my cars. Uh -huh. And it was sitting there in the driveway, and it's piled up all over the, uh, the car like that. So you have the car, and then you have the big blanket of snow outlying all the automobile. So I said to myself, this is a job for a shovel. <laughs> I picked up the heaviest shovel I could find and I start to dig my car out and I'm scooping the snow and I'm throwing it and suddenly I hit some ice. I hit a layer of ice and I think, yeah. man, oh man, the ice has formed on my car. So I bust, I bust off the ice and I think, wow, there's a lot of this ice. So I bust a little more of that ice. Before you know it, ladies and gentlemen, I had busted out my entire rear windshield. Good. Nicely done. Busted out the entire... Randy Brecker. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Interested in the Paul, story. Paul, how about a little, uh, a little bit of uh, dialing music? A little holiday dialing music here. We're going right to the phones. All right, we're calling our... For Hal, do me a favor. Turn on the external camera across the street there at the uh, Simon & Schuster building. There's our friend Meg Parson. Oh, she got her hair cut. Look at how nice she looks. I believe she got her hair cut. And let, and, or is that a different woman She got altogether? a nice little trim. <laughs> All right, I'm going to be dialing it now. We haven't talked to Meg in quite some time. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, that ought to do it. See how Meg is doing, see what her plans are for the holidays. We'll find out about her hopes, her fears, her dreams, her likes, her dislikes, things that make her think. Hi, Meg, it's me, Dave Letterman, your friend here at NBC. How are you, Meg? I'm fine, how are you? Hey, turn around and wave to America, Meg. Oh, there she is. Uh, Meg, uh... Meg, you, it looks to me like you may have gotten yourself a haircut recently. Yeah, I did. It looks very, very nice. Thank you. How, often, how often do you get your haircut? Not very frequently. Yeah? Uh, like what, once a, once a year? No, a little more often than that, but it's sort of traumatic, so I don't do it too often. Yeah, like twice a year, then? Like a couple times a year. Yeah. Like twice a year? No, like actually, don't take a couple so literally. Uh -huh. oh, 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 so I should take a couple to mean maybe more like three? More like once every two months. Oh, I see. So that would be like six times a year. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so in future conversations with you, if we're discussing the term couple, it should mean roughly six. Well, I should, yeah, you're right. Okay. Uh... Meg, how have you been? I'm doing okay. Yeah, how are things there at the job you work for, uh, uh, Simon & Schuster? Yeah, it's, You're, it's been great. Yeah, in charge of uh, publicity for the little pocketbooks, folks? Well, I'm not in charge of, but yeah. I work on Well, that's yes. what you told me last time. Well... You said you were in charge of it. No, I don't think I did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you have any blockbusters there on your uh, list? Well, the Kathy Lee Gifford biography is doing really well. Has gone... Hey, has gone through the roof, hasn't it? Yep. Yeah. As has the Rush Limbaugh book. That's right. It's number one, I believe, and Kathy Lee is like number four on the New York Times bestseller list. Yeah, they're both doing really well. You know, have you read either of those books? I actually read through the Kathy Lee book because uh -huh. I had it on my desk, and it was pretty good. Oh, good. Uh, and, and uh, you know, last night I heard a guy from Random House talking about his uh, modern library collection. Right. The, the classics mm -hmm. in, in nicely hardbound uh, covers and so forth. Mm -hmm. you have anything like that over there? Well, we do some of the classics in a more affordable paperback, like Last of the Mohicans. Yeah. A river runs through it, yeah. you know. Do you have old copies of Playboy up there? No. <laughs> Meg, what are your plans for the holidays? Well, it's rather complicated, but my family is celebrating Hanukkah, Christmas, and several birthdays all in the same weekend. That's great. It sounds very festive. Yeah, it will be. Yes. It'll be great. And what about your uh, boyfriend, Larry? Will he be going? Well, my boyfriend, Tony, uh -huh. is going to be celebrating with his family. Larry, Tony, what possible difference could it make? Larry, Tony... You're Ooh. bad. You know the difference. Now, uh, uh, so will, he, will Tony be going along? No, he's going to go up to be with his family. Oh, well, that's nice. Uh, but things continue to be solid with you and Tony. Yes. Well, by all means, Meg, give Tony my best. I right? sure will. You know, Meg, it occurs to me, uh, you and I have been chatting over the years now, I guess close to three years. Mm -hmm. You never ask me anything about me. Am I allowed? Well, you can ask me anything you want. I mean, I, I, I sometimes get the feeling that maybe you and I aren't really friends. Because... Well, then let me ask you some questions. All right. What are you doing for the holidays? Uh, you know, I don't know yet. Well, see, that's not so interesting. Make something up. 
All right, right now I'm putting the finishing touches on my own kidnapping. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how's that? That's pretty good. Yeah, you'll read about it along about the first of the year. All right. <laughs> uh, Meg, you know, since I don't know if we're going to see you before the actual holidays, when do you take off on your big vacation there? Probably 3 o'clock Christmas Eve. Oh, so you've got to work right up until the Christmas, huh? And that 3 o'clock is not even certain yet. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. are, you, are you making enough money at that place? Are you happy there? I am happy here. Do you, do you like the way? Do they treat you well? Yes, very yeah. well. And they recognize uh, your value and contribution as a person, not just an employee? I hope so. And the benefits are all right? Good dental, good... Uh, good insurance. Good everything, solid insurance everything's policy. Insurance. A regular raise, cost of living raise? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, if we don't get a chance to chat again before the holidays, I've arranged for you here tonight a little Christmas surprise. Okay. So, send in the little Christmas surprise there for Meg. Turn right around. Paul, I think we're going <laughs> to... Look, here comes your Christmas surprise now. Can we send him... Just send him in. He's if having he's, a problem with his hat. <laughs> okay. Look, it's Santa. Oh, oh. Uh, all right. I think I know the what there's a little present for you, Meg. Go ahead and open the oh, present oh, and show oh, folks okay. what it is. Thank you. This is very exciting. Santa is across I'm the street. It. Yeah. I'm Santa's opening it. been in Hurley's all afternoon. <laughs> what is it, Meg? It looks like the Kathy Lee Gifford book. Oh. A wonderful gift. Wow, look at there. <laughs> Thank you, Santa. How are we doing on time? All right, uh, Meg, do me a favor and take uh, Santa's hat and beard off, if you don't mind. Oh, I recognize the voice. Yeah, all right, take it off and show America who That's Santa voice. is tonight here. Your voice. There goes the hat. Little Paul, girl. a little music here for Santa. <laughs> yes. Yes. Let me say hello to David. Hi, David. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. I'm over here with Meg. All right, we'll, we'll see you soon. We'll see you in 1993. All right, bye, Regis. Bye-bye, David. Okay, there you go. We continue to be the talk show that does the most with the least. Uh, I tell you what we're going to do is a commercial, and when we come back, Walter Cronkite will join us. Welcome back to the show. We have begun uh, decorating the studio for Christmas, and uh, earlier we had the big tree. We had, had the big festive holiday Christmas TV studio tree in here. And I said, you know, I said, maybe let's wait on the big festive holiday studio Christmas tree. Did you? Can you hear me tonight, Paul? Yes. Attaboy! Well, you said let's wait on the studio let's Christmas wait, tree, but yet we you have rushing. all the That's rest right. well, of these we're, decorations We're, we're up. easing into the holiday season. I see, so it's a little at a time. Origi originally, I thought this was Christmas week. I was mistaken. It's not. Christmas week is next week. Next week. Yeah. And so I said, well, geez, is it too early? So we may have the tree tomorrow. All right. Yeah. Who's going to determine that? Just Put Regis whim? in a Santa suit, and the place will go nuts. <laughs> Meg, there, there. Got it. Oh, Santa's getting a little frisky. <laughs> Smells like reindeers. Uh, and, and... So we put uh, Regis in the Santa suit. Yeah. Meg doesn't care. No. No, the audience doesn't care. The, the only one who really has the proper spirit of it all is Regis. That's true, he's into it. <laughs> yeah. And the Brecker brothers loved it. Yeah, exactly. So, you know. Nice to see you, boys. When you crack up the band, you know you're happening. Here we go. Let's do our uh, top ten list, and then we'll bring out uh, Walter Cronkite, our old friend, Walter Cronkite. <laughs> nah, thank you very much. Regis in a Santa suit. So what? <laughs> like they see Regis in a Santa suit every day. And Actually, Meg knew it was Regis even before he came in. Yeah. She said, I recognize that voice. I know who it is. It's Regis Philbin in a Santa suit. And sure enough, it was. 
Here we go. <laughs> Everything okay out at the Spawn Ranch? <laughs> the Spawn Ranch. I know. I know. It's an all, I know. Like here salmon. we go. Some I know. I've salmon. Okay, here we That's go. That's what you meant, Salmon Ranch. Exactly. <laughs> Gentlemen, Walter Cronkite, a, a great man and, and a guy that I grew up with watching him do the news every night on CBS. So Walter Cronkite is, uh, is sitting right here, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm nervous because I've, I've idolized this man and respected this man for so many years. And to me, he stands for just the very best in, in broadcast journalism. So I'm not... I'm not You know, that ain't a bad idea for a show. Every, every night for an hour, I come out and say flattering things about other people on TV. Uh, and, so I'm, and so I'm not thinking straight, because I'm still thrown with Regis in the Santa suit. Right, I know. So I'm asking him about the people that he started out with in journalism, and, and, and bless his heart, he rattles off the names of his contemporaries, none of whom any of us recognize. Yeah. He finishes up 18 names, and I say, anybody else? Another ten names of people we don't know. Well, you were rattled. You were nervous. Walter, can how about why don't you mention some of your early neighbors? <laughs> he symbolizes the best. You were rattled. Yeah. Is Regis in the Santa suit out there? All right, bring him in here. Is he out there or not? Then there was Ed Stevens, my mailman. <laughs> could, I, could I be a bigger dweeb? We're rattled. He's very big. He symbolizes integrity. Bobby Johnson, our paper boy, would come. <laughs> One of the great living news personalities of, of all time. And I'm just... Uh, Rattled you a little bit. Right. Perfectly understand. Uh, tomorrow on the show, ladies and gentlemen, Robin Williams will be here. Los... <laughs> You've been such a wonderful audience. <laughs> Try and come back tomorrow night. <laughs> Los Lobos will be here tomorrow night. And, and uh, CBS sportscaster Terry Bradshaw will be right back after this. <laughs> Nice to see Great you. Great dancers everywhere. Hi, Dave. Nice to see you. What's up? Yes, I've, been, I've been doing this program with you every night for the last uh, 10, 12 years. Show business, you know, some people think that uh, you go into it because of the, the fame, the fortune, the glamour, the tinsel, the excitement, the money. I'm telling you, here, it, to me, is all the reward I need to keep me going another... <laughs> What is Madonna doing these days? Um, a man gives me this lovely candy kiss hat all the way from Hershey Town, USA, or, or wherever it is. Uh, okay. It, it'll be just like spring break. We'll, we'll get on the bus, we'll go see Dave. Uh, you were here Friday night, of course. I was here. I, and I, this is the thing I hate to do more. I hate, I hate blowing my own horn, but Friday night, for some reason, I said 
I, pr I predicted two Academy Awards. The Best Director will go to Clint Eastwood for uh, Unforgiven, and the Best Picture Academy Award will go to that motion picture that he directed, Unforgiven. <laughs> Boom! And, and they came to pass. <laughs> Friday night, remember that? Uh, I, I, did you? Yes. Hal, do me a favor, roll a couple of seconds now. We have gotten permission to show you uh, just a couple of seconds of the uh, Academy Award winning film, Unforgiven, directed by the Academy Award winning director, Clint right. Eastwood. Roll it. I, I, as, as, as predicted by me on front. Look at, there it is. One of the great westerns of all time. Is the Unforgiven. It's Maddie. Oh, hi. What does it tell you when, when this gets a bigger laugh than the old? Well. Say it, something shiny. Got gold. Uh, oh, I know what we're going to do tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Hal, do me a favor. Turn on our external camera, will you? Hal Gurney, ladies and gentlemen, award-winning director and racing legend, Hal Gurney. You're quite welcome, Hal. This is uh, looking south across 49th Street into the Simon & Schuster building, I believe, here as part of the uh, Radio City, Radio, what do they call this? Rockefeller Plaza. Rockefeller Plaza. Ro Rockefeller Center complex. And this is our old friend Meg Parsant, who is a, she's in publicity there at uh, Simon & Schuster. We've known Meg for, I don't know, four years? Three least, years? Yeah, at least. Lovely woman, beautiful hair, has, by the way, the best hair on television. Look at that. <laughs> that lovely glow, beautiful red hair, and she's staying late tonight doing some work. So what we're going to do now is place a call to our old friend, Meg. <laughs> All right, here we go. We got a one of those, we got a one of those, and then we got a one of those. Paul, did you watch the Academy Awards? I saw most of I think people understand that it's not just the Academy Awards. It's not just a Hollywood celebration. It's the night the we... Lady? Hello, yes, Meg. Hi. Hi, Meg, it's me, Dave Letterman. How you doing? I'm fine, how are you? Turn around and wave to America. Hey, Meg, you ought to come over. We got college guys on spring break in the audience tonight. Oh, boy. <laughs> We're having the times of our lives. I bet. Meg, how have you been? Everything's going fine. And it seems to me like you have a lot of plant life there in your window. And yeah, stuff. well, it's spring. I decided I had to kind of liven things up a little. Yeah, wasn't this one of the, the worst winters we've had? Well, it was the last, yeah, it was. It was, it was just nasty and, and, and still, and people don't believe this, uh, despite the fact that the, uh, we had temperatures in the 80s over the weekend, we still have big clumps of gray frozen ice and snow on the streets of New York, don't we? Yes, we do. Yeah. It's mixed with ice and salt and debris. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and so uh, 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 we, you've added there a breath of spring in your own windowsill. Well, I felt a need to. Yeah. Uh, Meg, I was... Uh, I was uh, telling people before I called you that last night when we were watching the Academy Awards, I, I, th I know that people realize that it's, a, it's a, uh, a, an award show, uh, it's a celebration, it's, uh, we get to see a lot of stars, but I think the one thing that people overlook year in and year out, it's the night that we salute Oscar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, you're right. It's one of those things I've been saying that all weekend to anybody, to my mailman, to the, to the guy in the grocery store, to the guy at the filling station. You know, it's the night we salute Oscar. And they all pretty much have that same reaction. Nothing. Meg, uh, tell me what's new with uh, you and uh, Jerry? What's new on that front? With Tony? Yeah, Tony. <laughs> Nothing much new. Everything's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, do you have any free time? Was there a chance that you and I might uh, have dinner together one night this week, do you think? Well, this week's pretty busy. Do what? It's a very busy week for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, what with taxes due and all. Taxes, you know, holidays. Uh, you know, Meg, you know, I think the world of you, I've always thought the world of you. Well, that's nice, thanks. You, you know, I, I think they don't come any better than you. Thanks. Yeah. Um, you know, we were thinking because it is, uh, we're all sick of the winter, we, we're going to help uh, kind of uh, celebrate springtime. Is yeah. Biff Henderson over there, Meg? Call, call out Biff. Just oh, call here it. he comes. Yeah. yeah. 
There's uh, one of our stage managers, Biff Henderson, and I believe Biff has bags of fresh flower petals. Oh, my gosh, he does. Can, can you confirm that, Meg? I can. They're very fragrant and colorful. Yeah, all right. <laughs> now, now, Meg, what you and Biff need to do is clear the windowsill there of, right? of, of loose items. Clear everything off the windowsill. Uh-huh. And can you open your window still? I haven't tried in a while, but I imagine All right, so. Give it a good shove. Okay. How long have you known Jerry, by the way? How long have you been going? I've known Tony for uh, <laughs> for several years. Do you, do you think that, that when I chat with you on the phone like this, that it, sometimes it bothers him or not, or he's he just not? I'm not a factor in his life. I don't it? think it should bother him. Oh, okay, well, I like that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, but 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 Meg, you know, you understand that I am mad for you. Well, that's very nice. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Look, look at her squirm, will you? <laughs> All right, now, uh, what we want to do, we want to kind of create the illusion of some sort of uh, springtime fantasy land here. Okay. So whenever you're comfortable, go ahead and dump one of those bags, and it's all, it's all biodegradable matter. Those are all actual flower petals. That's true. They are organic okay. matter. All right, so you, uh, you, guys, you guys go ahead and dump them, and we'll see what kind of effect this has here. It should cheer us up for, look at that. What a, what a wonderful job. You did a great thing. That's something I've always wanted to do. That well, was great. Good for you. We all feel much better now. Now, is Absolutely. there any leftover? Can we do this again later in the show? <laughs> sure. Or is that it? Ask Biff. Is that all? Is that it? Oh, there's more. Okay, maybe no, we'll do it later. Okay. All right. Well, you and Biff uh, sit tight. We'll talk to you soon. All righty. Uh, thanks, Meg. Nice job. Okay. Okay, there she is. for a commercial. We'll be right back with Terry Gar. Belly, Belly will be out a bit later. How many folks in the group known as Belly? Folks? Well, uh, two of them are joining us this evening. I believe right. it's a four-piece group. Oh, so it's a four-piece Belly. Two of them will be with us this evening, joining our group, That's a Underbelly. Different... Oh. So, <laughs> so it's Belly meets Underbelly tonight. Uh, and George Miller will be here tomorrow on the uh, program. Oh, man, another great show, Roseanne Cash. And uh, from CBS Sports, uh, Pat O'Brien. Okay. Is Meg still here? Meg, hi, Meg, how you doing? I'm okay. Yeah, things are going pretty well over here. Terry Gar was out here. That sounds fun. Now, now you're in publishing. Uh, how do you pronounce the word A-S-T-E-R-I-S-K? Asterisk. There you go. <laughs> uh, Meg, do you have any more of those flower petals left? I sure do. Should I dump some more out? Yeah, dump a few more out. There's Biff. How's Biff behaving himself Biff tonight? Biff is great. He's a delight to spend time with. Biff is a wonderful man. I've known Biff for quite a long time, and, uh, and I feel the same about you, Meg. I feel well, you're... Well, a... he's just a great guy. Yeah. There we go. Very nice. And, and how are you feeling now, Meg? Perhaps in the mood for romance? Well, I feel um, like spring is in the air. Well, good for you. Are we all out of flower petals? No, I think we have one more bag. Okay, we'll chat with you a little bit later, Meg. All right. All right, all my best. Okay. Meg, Meg, hey, what? Meg. What? Bonsoir. Bonsoir. <laughs> 
Ladies and gentlemen, the man, the man in black. We established this the last time you were here. Still got those t-shirts. Yeah, for you, have a, you have a black outfit on, and your last name is Black. That, ladies and gentlemen, is is the perfect show business gimmick, right there. <laughs> your last name is Black. You have a little black outfit. <laughs> Paul Schaefer. Paul, how are you tonight? David, I'm uh, just fine, and thank you very much, everybody. It's nice to see you all. How are you today, David? Fine, Paul. How good. are you? I'm marvelous. a boy. Thank you. It's nice to see you. I'm feeling good. And uh, it's great to have Clint Black in the band tonight. Why don't you tell people why your voice is distorted there? Well, this evening, David, my voice is being scrambled for security reasons. <laughs> That's all I can say. Okay. This is going to be the sound of my voice okay. throughout the evening. And, uh, Start getting used to it now, because this is going to be it. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Hal, do me a favor, turn on the external camera. Boy, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a beautiful, beautiful spring so far here in New York City. This is looking south from the 14th floor, looking across the street there, 49th Street, to uh, some kind of publishing concern. What is it, Simon & Schuster? It is Simon & Schuster? It's po It's what? Pocket Books, a division of Simon & Schuster. This is our old friend Meg Parsant. I believe that's Meg. Do we think that's Meg? It doesn't quite look like Meg. We've known Meg for a couple of years, and we started phoning her across the street, and she's a, a lovely woman. She works there uh, at Pocket Books in, uh, she's like an editor or a publicity or, or something like that. She looks like she's in a wonderful mood, too. <laughs> All right, now we're going to place a call over there right now. Our old friend uh, Meg. Okay. All right, this should be Meg Parsant on the line now. Let's just see. The phone should be ringing now. Did I miss dial? There it is. There's one of her co-workers. Hello, publicity? Uh, yeah. My name is Doug Lemons. I have an idea for a book. It's about a boy and a, and a kitty and a camel. And uh, what they do is they have a car and they drive... Uh, hi. Hi, Meg. It's, uh, it's me, Dave. How you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Did, did you know it was me there? You know, it sounds like a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> do you get a lot of calls like that for books? Yes. Yeah, and what, what, uh, what do you do with them? I just try to be as tactful as possible. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. A as you are in every other aspect of your life, and I admire you and applaud you for that. Well, thank you. You know, Meg, what I think is the most important thing to keep in mind as we kind of spin out of control on this, this global firestorm we call Earth? What? Try to be in a wonderful mood. <laughs> Meg, how you doing? How was your weekend? What have you been doing? Uh, everything's fine. I'm doing really well. I had a great weekend. Yeah, what'd you do? Spend some time with Jerry? I spent some time with Tony. Tony, right. <laughs> Jerry, Tony, one of the others. Um, we had a nice time. We went upstate. It was really beautiful. What, was there. it beautiful up there? It was gorgeous, yeah. Have the leaves started to turn yet? <laughs> 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 Whenever people are going upstate, they only just see the foliage turn, yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, now, uh, Meg, let me ask you about your name. Your last name sounds, I I is it French? Is it, in, have we covered this before? We haven't covered it. It's not French. It actually used to be Pesachsen. Uh -huh. And, uh, someone on one of my grandfather's side was, I guess, Russian, and he stopped over in France on his way to America and right. changed it. Well, I see. Well, that's an interesting story right there. Yeah. And your, your first name, Meg, mm -hmm. is that short for something? No, it's just Meg. Meg. I, w I was thinking to myself earlier today, and, and, uh, trust me, I didn't spend a lot of time on this, but... <laughs> But I, I was thinking maybe it was Megan. Nope. Yeah. Do you have a middle name? Yeah, I do. What is your middle name? Alice. Oh, Meg Alice uh, Parsant. Yeah. Wow, that, that sounds very sort of old world and important, doesn't I, it? I guess. Yeah. Uh, like, it puts me in the mind of another publishing great, Claire Booth Luce. <laughs> you know, I was in Hurley's one night and there was a loose booth down there and we just... We could, uh, thank you very much. Where, who gave you guys the night off? Listen, uh, Meg... <laughs> 
Uh, you know, we're going to CBS pretty soon. Yeah, I've heard. So, so I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to talk to you again before we blow out of this dump. Yeah. Now, are, Meg, will you, will you be able to come with us or not? I think I have to keep my job here. Well, no, I, I, I wasn't suggesting that you leave your job there yeah. because I know you enjoy what you do. But, I mean, can we continue to have you on the program? Well, I hope you will. Or, or did you sign some kind of deal with the network here? No, I didn't sign any deal. <laughs> I don't want to catch you with the new guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And uh, by the way, Meg, the new guy is here tonight. The guy who's taking this job will be here. Oh, really? Yeah. Are you excited about that? Are you? Well, yeah. <laughs> sure. That's great. And, and Meg, more importantly than that, we've goofed uh, Paul's voice up, and he's pretending that he's uh, had to confuse his uh, voice for... Uh, what is it, security? I, my voice is being yeah. uh, changed for security reasons. So it's just crazy over here tonight, it Meg. It sounds like a madhouse. Uh, and, yeah, it is. And, and I guess the reason, the reason I wanted, uh, we wanted you to throw beach balls out the window, uh, for, but the, for the life of me, I can't remember why now. Because it's uh, the beginning of summer. That's I guess. Right. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Do you have any beach balls there, Meg? I don't happen to have any, no. Okay, well, thanks for calling. We'll get back to you. Okay. We didn't send the beach balls over? I we... actually hear they come. There you go. Here they are. All right, Meg, uh, I think we've done this once before. Our, uh, one of our stage managers, Biff Henderson, is down there on the sidewalk. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. And he's got some kind of uh, catching device. We might not be as lucky as we were that one time. Yeah, you did a pretty good job before. I think you can do it again. I think Biff was magnificent, but... Yeah. It really, it's pretty much up to uh, Biff and gravity. You have very little to do with this. Okay, so I won't feel yeah. bad if it doesn't work. Yeah. All right, but uh, do you understand what we're doing, Meg? This is to celebrate summer. Okay, it's like a summer yeah. festival. Okay. Yeah, so I wouldn't say festival. I'd say more of a celebration. Okay, that's more the word we're, I was We're celebrating. For. It's not all that festive. Okay, okay well, we're going to make it more festive. All right, is Biff down there? He is. All right, could we see Biff? Is it possible to tilt down and He's see Biff? He's got a green Biff Hawaiian shirt on. A green Hawaiian shirt. There. Wow, man, what are we doing? But Meg, put it, put on the safety harness for heaven's sakes. I know, it's pretty scary. Well, oh, there's there's Biff right there. We we could leave Biff out there all night and he'd collect like a thousand dollars in that empty. <laughs> People just come by and throw money in his basket. Okay, uh, Anton, you guys ready? Here we go. Give it a shot, Meg. Okay. And don't hurt yourself. Be very, very careful. Okay, I'm just going to let it go and yeah. see which way the wind takes it. All right, it. We gotta, it's got to clear the uh, uh, overhang there. Here we go. Okay. There's the first. And it's, it could be. Oh. <laughs> Jeez, uh, I, think, I think Biff might have been flattened by a tour bus. Should we try again? Yeah, give it one more shot here. I don't Okay. Uh, do you see him at all? Yeah. Yeah, the wind seems to be blowing west. All right. Oh, this is dropping. Oh, it's hugging the building. It could be. It looks... Oh! All right. Meg, let's see. We have time for one more. Okay. Okay. But, you know, I don't think it's you. I think everything's fine. Well, thanks. Just, just relax. Ah. There we go. That was the wind. Uh, okay. What do you think? All right. One more. Okay. 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 All right. I'm, I've got a couple of the boys from NASA down in Houston, and they're telling me, let's give it one more. Oh, this could be. It's got, it looks like. Okay. Close enough. Meg, hang, hang on. We'll try it a little later, okay? okay Can you okay. hang around? Yeah. All right, good. Nice job. I'll chat with you later. Okay. Thanks, Meg. Okay, okay, there she is. Buddy Meg Parsons. Okay. We have to uh, pause here for a commercial. We'll be right back with the uh, new host of the program, uh, Conan O'Brien, ladies and gentlemen. the program. We have a pencil in the building. Anybody have a pencil? Maybe the new guy brought a pencil with him. It? Be the very first day of work, he brings a pencil. Here we go. Thank you very much, Tony. Uh, on the program this evening, uh, Kenneth Branagh will be here. Uh, also, uh, singer Clint Black and uh, Conan O'Brien will be out in a couple of minutes. And, and I think we've had a lot of fun so far. The audience seems to be in a contemplative mood tonight. 
And I applaud that because, uh, what was it? Oh, you had to be in a... I forget what I was talking about. You've got to be in a wonderful frame of mind. Right, that's right. And we have no idea why your voice is like that. But well, let's just say that certain executives would be in a much more relaxed state of mind if my voice was scrambled as it is now for <laughs> security reasons. Okay. And what about this? Let's just say we're tired of the bit. All right, well... <laughs> is there any... Is, would there be anything... I don't know. And our old friend across the street, Meg uh, Parson, is dropping beach balls out the window. To me, that's your show right there. there Everybody is your else show. can pack up and go home. You know, your little special effects and all of that. We got uh, a lovely young woman tossing beach balls down on the 49th Street. And uh, I'll do a little bit of uh, wagering for that. Huh? Did, I'm starting to mutter again. And Clint Black is here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Yeah. On tonight's program, the, uh, the audience finds themselves in a contemplative mood. <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> a man actually brought a book with him tonight. That's right, I noticed that. He's up there reading. Show. For the dull spots, for the yeah. slow spots. Takes a... Yeah, let's see. And Barbara uh -huh. slipped into her silky pink night cream. <laughs> Uh, the program tomorrow, Tom Arnold will be here, uh, Jake Johansson, and uh, Mike Lupica, fine sports writer mm. and a host of his very own uh, talk radio uh, program, sports radio program here at New York City. Mike Lupica uh, writes for the New York uh, Daily News, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get on the phone here. <laughs> Sir, if you have a second, why don't you just read aloud to the rest of the audience? Man alive. Hello, Meg. How you doing? I'm okay. Boy, Meg, I wish you were here tonight. Oh, yeah? Oh, it's just nuts here. It's crazy. It's like, uh, it's like a ball lightning. Have you ever experienced ball lightning? I don't think so. Oh, it's like, it's, it's that exciting. Holy. It's, oh, everything is crackling here tonight. Yikes. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's good. Yeah, hey, come on over and have a seat in the audience because that's, it reminds me of the very response we're getting from the audience members. Yikes. Yikes. We actually heard earlier a guy say, yikes, I forgot mm. to bring a book. <laughs> <laughs> um, Meg, we, ha we have time here, and uh, Clint Black's going to sing for us, so try another one of those. We gave Biff a different container downstairs. Okay. Just Be careful, Meg. Strap on the safety harness, and here we go. Okay. All right. Safe safety first. first. Yeah, throw, throw it a little to the east. Make it go east, because you've got a wind coming from that direction. That's it. That's perfect. That's a beautiful golf shot. That's a beautiful... That's... Should... Try one more. Should I try another? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you mind? Jeez, no. I, uh, I hope your arm's not tired, Meg. No, it's okay. Okay, there, that's... Oh, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful approach shot. She should be on. She is. There it is. That's right. Biff banging that wash tub off somebody's car. <laughs> All right. Hey, Meg, we got to run. I will talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. We'll be right back here with Clint Black. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Meg, we got to go. Hello. Uh, hi. Yeah, we got to go. Thanks a lot. Oh, okay. he's one real quick. All right. uh, my thanks also to uh, Kenneth Branagh and uh, Conan O'Brien and Clint Black. You know, Clint, uh, the new guy told me he don't like harmonica music. <laughs> How about that, huh? It's not a harmonica. Yeah, there you go. Uh, all right, we got to go, folks. We'll see you tomorrow night.
Did not catch one. <laughs> With what? You're gonna try to catch one though, right? Which floor is it? Which floor is it up there? Oh, the head sticking out. Right there. Got a lot of itches. Thanks, everybody. Hi, Dave. Nice to see you, Paul. How are you? Good to have you here. Nice to have you here. Nice to have everybody in the band here. Nice to see you. Hey, kids. Nice to see you. Hey, how's it going? Hey, kids. Hey, uh, uh. <laughs> Hal, do me a favor. Turn on the uh, camera upstairs. This will be interesting for us. We have a... Now, this is the camera looking out of our building across 52nd Street, I believe. 53rd. Thank you very much. 53rd. <laughs> I've got to get my road atlas. Now... When we used to do the old show, over there at the other network, whenever we would turn the camera on and look across what was 49th Street, we saw this woman working for Simon & Schuster, a lovely, very nice woman, and we, we got to know her pretty well and, and really enjoyed talking with her from time to time. Her name sure. was Meg Parsant. Love her. She was yeah. great. So uh, wherever I go, people always ask me, Dave, will we get a chance to see Meg on the new show? So Hal, do us a favor, turn on that camera again, and let's see if we can't find Meg over here. It's the toothbrush building. We're getting some of the sunset reflection glow. And this, there she is. That's her, Paul. It's Meg, our There's old Meg. friend Meg Parsant, right there. What are the chances? We move eight blocks. Two weeks later, Meg moves eight blocks. It's, it's, hard, it's imponderable, isn't great, it? Great, great how it worked out. Turn it on again, Hal. There she is. She's uh, doing, uh, working very hard doing something. I'm going to give her a call now and see if we can chat with her. I hope I have the correct phone number here. Uh,
Okay, that should be it. The next voice you hear should be that of our old friend Meg Parsant. Hello. Hi, Meg. It's me, Dave. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Turn around and wave to America. There she is. You look wonderful. Okay. Now, uh, Meg, it does seem odd that uh, you have moved to buildings, but that's not the case, is it? No, I still have my same job. Yeah. I just uh, found myself here. No, we it's not, no, don't suggest that there's a kidnapping involved no, or any, not, any form actually, of abduction. We I, invited I you to come over. Yes, you did. So that we could chat with you again. You know why, Meg? Why? Because we care about you. Oh. We, we like you, and we have strong feelings for you. Well, that's so nice. Now, you know, I, I have a new show now. I, I do know that. Yeah, we're, we're on CBS now. Mm -hmm. Have you been watching the new show? I've been watching a lot more than uh, maybe I used to. Really? Yes. Yeah. What, what does that mean, like once a month? No, it means I've watched at least five or six of the shows. Well, it's on a little earlier. Did you know that? I do, and I think that's why I'm watching yeah. more. Now, how was your summer? It was great. Yeah. I, um, I took a trip up to Maine with Tony, and that yeah, was a Tony, lot your of boyfriend. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, Meg, when, whenever I go anyplace, people always say, how's, how's Meg? <laughs> now, when you go places, do people inquire after me? Occasionally. What do they say? They say, how's Dave? Right. <laughs> and, 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 Meg, what do you say? I say, I, I assume he's doing very well. And right. I think you are. What, but do you, do, you, do you say nice things about me? Only. Really? Mm hmm So if somebody would say, how's Dave, and you say he's a wonderful man, we, oh. we've grown close over the years. It never really got to that point in the conversation, but, you know. And have you missed me over the summer, Meg? Yes, I have. Do us a favor now and describe your boyfriend, Tony, for us. Describe him? Yeah, for people who may not have seen a picture of Tony. He is about 5'9 or so, and he's got Does he wear brown hair. Brown hair, 5'9, lips in his shoes. Brown eyes, he's got a, a nose. Yeah. Mm. Not I, <laughs> you know, I'm still having difficulty picturing what Tony looks like. Uh, so what we've done, we've uh, asked a police sketch artist to come in, Meg. <laughs> this gentleman's name is Steve Mancusi from the old TV show Mancusi. Do you remember that, Paul? Oh, Thursday nights that. on ABC, Ma it's Mancusi, Mancusi, police sketch artist. So if he would just, if he would come in there, there's Mancusi. Here he is. Yeah. So. <laughs> So Meg, if you, at home. If, you, if, you can, if you can do me a favor, Meg, and just describe Tony to Steve, okay. and then as the show continues, we'll get a really good idea what Tony looks like, okay. all right? Okay, this is a good idea. All right, okay. so we'll leave you alone in there. Nice chatting with you, and good to see you again, Meg. Well, thanks. All right, we'll be back. Okay. All right, there's our old friend Meg Parsant right there. Police sketch artist Steve Mancusi. It was on Thursday nights right after Vegas. Mancusi. Mancusi. Sketch artist. Yes. <laughs> Come in with his chalk and draw up a picture of whoever you wanted. We're going to pause now for a commercial. We'll be right back with Sylvester Stallone, ladies and gentlemen. Evis made that song popular, didn't he? Uh, El Elvis. Evis. Elvis. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice pronunciation. Uh, Melissa Etheridge will be out here a bit later, ladies and gentlemen. It's a brand new album. Brand new. You call them albums or are they CDs? No, they're CDs, yeah. But aren't they, isn't it still an album? What an is album? an album? A compendium of work? It's just I don't remember the, albums. The, uh, the digital disc, the electronic disc, Yes, album? that's yeah, what exactly. it is. Exactly, that's what it is. And uh, Janine Garofalo will be out here tomorrow. Well, we've got another great show tomorrow. Let's check on Meg for a seal that sketch is doing with Steve Mancuso, police sketch artist. That's Mission Impossible. Oh, yeah. Where, yeah, where's the Steve Mancusi police sketch well, artist? I don't music? remember the theme of Mancusi. All right, well, see that you do. Hello, Meg, are you there? Yes, we're right here. How, how's that sketch coming along? It's coming along great. And how's doing Steve, a good job. How's Steve's cold coming along? I don't know. Yeah. And Meg, do me a favor, have him uh, put it up to the window there, and we get an idea of what your boyfriend looks like. Sure. Right. Um, parts of it are a little inaccurate. Should I hold it up? Or well, do you... I, it shouldn't be inaccurate. He's getting the description from you. Well, then it's sort of hard to communicate this, you know? Yeah, all right. Let's see. That's the guy that robbed me on the subway. I've seen that guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Put it back up there again. Yeah, are you going to say something else mean? No, no. Just, just relax. Hey, hey, guess who was here, Meg? Sylvester Stallone. That's pretty neat. Yeah, no, there, there's a, there's a good-looking guy, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Now, what about that is inaccurate? I think the mouth is a little off somehow, but everything else looks excellent. Really? Yeah. Well, it looks to me like he needs a haircut. Have him take a little off. The, I don't like the way that front thing hangs down. He's got very full hair. Really? Well, still, to have him take off about an inch off that front thing, all right? I'll see what we can do. All right, Meg, we'll check back with you a little bit later. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Okay. Steve Mancusi, police sketch artist. Oh, no, that's Beretta or that's Mag. Ma huh? Close as I could get. All right. <laughs> I wish you'd do your homework. Okay, my thanks to Janine Garofalo. Thank you very much, Janine. Uh, Melissa Etheridge and Sylvester Stallone. Meg Parsant. Steve Mancusi. Tomorrow on the program... Oh, there we go. Oh, there's the actual guy. There's Tony. How about that? Well, that doesn't look so bad, does it? Uh, also, Johnny Cash will be here tomorrow. And Bob Saget. Thanks for joining us, folks. We'll see you tomorrow night. Bye-bye.